Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be looking at constructors in C++. So let's go ahead and get started. And while this example will be using classes, the same ideas work for structs as well. So here's our class wallet. It has our private data members dollars and cents, and it also has our member functions, say print, and our setters, and our getters. So what if we want to define what happens when a, uh, our, an instance of this class is being created? So that's what a constructor does. So here we can define a constructor. It will have the same name as the class. So our class wallet has a constructor called wallet. And here we're saying here's one that will take uh, two integers, um, one D and one C. And then we've defined it externally using the same way we do for methods that are defined externally, uh, you know, using wallet colon colon then whatever the name of the method is. In this case, it's a constructor wallet. Now constructors don't have a return type, so we don't need to say void here. Um, it will just be kind of empty, so we don't give it a return type. And then here's uh, the two parameters, int d and int c, and I'm just setting dollars and cents to d and c respectively. Right, so this is a really convenient thing if we say wanted to uh, avoid having to call, you know, set dollars and set cents after created an instance of the object, right? We can just have it done during construction. And so here's an example of how to use that. So here we have a new instance of wallet here called W1, and I'm calling the constructor using 10 and 37. So I'm using that constructor that we've defined. Now you may be wondering, last time in the last video, we didn't define a constructor at all. So how did, you know, how did, you know, say the compiler or how did, you know, the runtime know what to do when you create an instance of an object? Well, if you don't give a class constructor, the compiler may automatically give it one for you. And we can explicitly tell the compiler to give this class a constructor by doing this wallet and then an empty parameter list is equal to default. This just says you want the compiler to give you, um, the def uh, give you a default constructor. And that will end up looking something like this. Right? Very simple doesn't do anything, so it won't initialize dollars and cents. It won't zero initialize dollars and cents, right? It just gives you an instance of this class, right? But here, we'll just go ahead and leave it as one defined or created by the compiler for you. So when would we get a call to save this default constructor? Well, it would be something like this. If we just said wallet w2, just kind of like if, if we said int a, this will call the default constructor, right? So it won't do anything. So the values of dollars and cents could be garbage. So here we call w2.print and it will just print whatever is at those memory locations at that time. And that'll change between, you know, whenever we run the program, it could be different every single time. So it's undefined behavior, it's you know, kind of garbage values in here. So they're not initialized. Now we can't zero initialize, right? Uh, this uh, object. So here, if I do wallet w3 is equal to wallet, this will actually do value initialization, which will in turn do zero initialization, right? And this will mean, this means that dollars and cents will be set equal to zero, right? And so if you really wanna you know, get to know, say the different ways that you have to um, you know, initialize values in C++, you should really look up value initialization and zero initialization, um, and there's a there's tons of ways you can initialize things in C++, but just to explain this concept a little bit more, uh, we're going to look at this bullet point two. So just like we looked at, you know, template type name T, so T just stands for any particular type. So if T is a class type with a default constructor that is neither user provided nor deleted, so in our case, we're telling the compiler to create the default constructor for us, so it's not user provided, and we haven't deleted it, uh, the object is zero initialized and then it is default initialized uh, if uh, it has a non-trivial default constructor. So in this case, we just need to worry about the object is zero initialized. And here's an example of that syntax. So here we're creating wallet with the uh, prints and this will go ahead and create right, an instance of this object that's zero initialized. And then there's also a bunch of other different um, formats for this as well. So another one we have in our code is this angle bracket as well. So if we go ahead and go down to, um, if we go ahead and exit out of here and we look at this wallet w3 is equal to wallet, this will go ahead and end up zero initializing those values. So we get the expected value when we call print to be zero. Likewise, we get the same thing if we swap this out with these angle brackets. 
So it takes some practice getting to know the different ways we have to initialize things in C++. But in this case, you know, using the syntax and understanding kind of the rules here, we know that these are going to be zero initialized. So let's go ahead and, you know, we'll go ahead and compile this. And we can go ahead and run constructors. And we see that, you know, in the first case, when we called our defined constructor that does, uh, um, you know, takes two integers, we see we get the expected value of 1037 with the one that does default initialization, right? So it calls that default constructor uh, that doesn't do anything. We see we get some random numbers in here. Some, you know, this could be positive or negative. In this case, they both ended up being positive. And then we have, you know, the one that ended up being zero initialization, right? Ended up being, you know, 0.0, .0 and that'll be 0.0, .0 every single time. And if we run this multiple times, you see that the case where we get these garbage values, it could be different every single time, right? So we gotta be kind of careful there when we're, you know, when we're doing initialization in C++. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time so we can kind of wrap things up looking back at our code. So when we're defining constructors, um, they'll just have the, uh, let's go ahead and open up constructors.cpp. When we're defining constructors, they'll have the same name as the class themselves. We can define them externally. Um, say like this wallet colon colon wallet. We want the compiler to define one for us. We can say wallet with the empty parameter list is equal to default. And then we just have to be careful about how this will actually initialize the value in our class that we're going to be accessing them. So that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, all this code's available at github.com slash coffee before arch. So here we have C++ crash course, fundamental concepts, and then under objects, we have constructors. So feel free to take a look at this code, download it, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions, and as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.